Today we're reviewing the Maya Project. I'm Mark Gaia. Welcome to Board Game Coffee. That was all wrong. Today we're reviewing the Maya Project. Today we're reviewing the Maya Pro. Today we're reviewing the Maya. Today we're reviewing the Gaia Project. Ah, uh, Mark Gaia. What is wrong with you? Okay, I got this. You sure? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I got it. Okay, one more time. You got this. All right. Today we're reviewing the Gaia Project. Ah, uh, Mark Maya. Welcome to Project Coffee. Are you fucking kidding me? All right, now, before we get started with that review, I'd like to remind you about subscribing to our channel. It's the best way to keep up to date with everything we do here at Board Game Coffee. The Gaia Project is a really complicated game for one to four players. Yes, I am aware that really complicated isn't actually a board game category, but I thought you should know. According to Board Game Geek, the Gaia Project is classified as a civilization and economic game. I never really got the sense of building a civilization while I was playing, but looking back, I guess I can see it. You see, in Gaia Project, players start on their own home planets and branch out from there to reach and terraform other planets to make them feel a little more like home. The game is played in six rounds. A round consists of each player taking one action a turn and going around the table until every player has passed. The goal is to score more points than everyone else, and there's a lot of ways to do so. Each round will also have randomly assigned scoring tiles, which act like achievements that will award anyone who achieves it some sweet bonus points. Now, as you spread your seed across the universe, you'll be building all kinds of different structures, each of which will generate a currency of one type or another that you can spend on more stuff to help you earn more points. But there's a catch. You see, buildings in Gaia Project are constructed via an upgrade system. So, by upgrading one building to another, you will earn another resource generator. But, you'll lose the resource generation of the building you've replaced. And I love the strategy that that mechanic added to the game. But, as much as I like the game's mechanics, I never really saw myself as an intergalactic explorer prepping planets for colonization. I was just some guy trying to get more points than the other guy. I never really bought into the story it was selling. But you know what? That's fine, because as much as I like a good thematic game, I also like getting lost in a game's mechanics, and with a Gaia project, I can. And I did. But you need to know this before you rush up to buy a copy. This isn't the easiest game to learn. I mean, this isn't the biggest rule book I've read, but it's got a lot to say in its 24 pages. And if you're playing single player, you'll be reading this too. Now, I'm not saying it's not worth the effort, because I totally think it is, but get ready to buckle down and study. And read the errata. For those of you that don't know what that is, an errata is where broken rules go to get fixed. As far as the Gaia project was concerned, I played many games before I read the errata, and I ended up using these things all wrong. Which sucked, because I was the only one using them. What are these things? Well, this is a Gaia form and you use them to turn transitum planets into something habitable for your species. A process known as a Gaia project. Now, you would think that completing a Gaia project would be a big deal, considering they are the game's namesake. But they're not a big deal. At least not in any game I've played. But that doesn't mean they're useless, I just never felt that they were worth the effort that I put in. Because it's a lot easier to just terraform a neighboring planet than it is to complete a Gaia project. Sure, there are some races that make it easier to Gaia form a planet, but I have yet to play a game where that was the winning strategy. And speaking of strategy, I love Gaia strategy. It took me a while to wrap my head around it, but when I got it, I wanted to do it again. Now, before I got it, I still wanted to do it again, because I knew I was that much closer to understanding the point-generating madness that lives inside this box. But here's the thing, there are a lot of roads to victory in the Gaia Project, and that's what I like. But this scoring board here awards you for completing specific tasks, which kind of sways everyone's strategy in one direction. But then again, Gaia Project isn't so much about surprising people with sneak attacks, because there is no attacking. It's about doing more with what you're given than everyone else. 
And the thing is, everyone is given something different at the start. Each race in the game has its own unique set of abilities, which allows them to do the same thing you can do, but different. Now, I don't know about you, but when we play, it always feels like everyone else has a better setup than I do. I guess the grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> Terraforming humor. I mean, just look at the other guys. They've got more power, more resources. It's the whole thing is just unfair. How do you expect me to compete against that? But it works. I don't know how, but it does. Because no matter how uneven it might have felt at the start, by the end, you'll realize how even we really were. Unless you're just not that good, in which case, ah, well, you know, he tries. And more often than not, you're going to want to play the last race you played again. Because now that you know what you know, you'll be able to implement strategies best suited to that race's characteristics. But with so many races to choose from, I've never played with the same race twice. I just want to play with them all. But regardless of race, one thing that remains consistent is how much there is to track. And there's a lot. And really, that's probably what's going to trip you up the most. And by far the most common question asked by new players, including myself, is... Where do I get these cards again? Answer? Just place one of these buildings sitting on the symbol that looks like the card you're asking about. Easy, right? It's not that it's hard to remember. It's that it's one of many things you need to remember. Want to move up this track? Well, you're going to need some of this blue stuff. Want to buy something from here? You're going to need some purple things in this space, but not this one. Want to spend some credits? Well, make sure you move this marker before you move this one, because if you do it the other way around, that's all wrong. Need a planet terraformed? Don't forget you need to pay enough white things to cover the cost of these brown things, which is indicated on this chart over here. And that's just a taste of what you're getting into. I found if I wanted to put a plan into motion, it was best to think through the steps backwards. But by the time I mentally worked my way back to the start of my master plan, I had completely forgot what the reasoning for the plan was in the first place. Okay, so to do that I'm going to need some more ore, but where do I get more ore? I can spend one of my green cubes to get ore, that'll work, but then I'll be short a green cube. I guess I can always spend power to get a green cube, then use my ability to recharge my power, and then use that power to generate some extra credits so I can... So I can... What was it I need credits for? What the hell was I even doing? Okay, keep it together, Maya. Keep it together. Don't let the others see you don't know what you're doing. They can smell fear. Credits? Check. Or? Check. Green cubes, check. What was this all for again? True story. But getting your micromanagement game in order is part of the challenge. The Gaia project is a big, complex machine that demands your respect and every last bit of your attention. Or, it'll eat you alive. Now, although a game of Gaia project can run a little long, about three hours on average, my normal Gaia group, myself excluded, has come to the consensus that the game is too short. It's not often that a three hour game is considered too short. You see, they're convinced that there just isn't enough time to get their engine going, or that the game will end just as they do, and they don't get to reap the benefits of all their hard work. And I think they have some valid points, because as players they never got that satisfaction that comes with completing a project. And they swear that all they need is just one more turn. One more turn and all their plans will come to fruition. Well, the honest truth is, space is a cruel place. So suck it up, buttercup. So what's my final verdict? Gaia Project is a great game for gamers looking for something a little more advanced. 
It's not easy, and even more experienced players will require a game or two before they start feeling comfortable with the game's mechanics. And it's got loads of strategy, and all the different races add tons of replay value. And that's awesome! And when all is said and done, I really like playing Gaia Project. Now, the game is expensive, so there is that. But if you break it down into the hours of entertainment you get from it, it's well worth the sticker price. Alright, if you like this video and you like to keep up to date with everything we do here at Board Game Coffee, subscribe here. And if you want to see more videos right now, click here. And if that's not enough, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm Mark Maya, and this is Board Game Coffee. And remember, have fun, keep gaming, be social. See you next week.